What's up everyone, back for another beer review and today is a special beer review because it is the 100th review here on my channel. So a few short months ago, I hit my 50th review, which means over the past couple months, I've been cranking out the content to hit 100. And you know what? The reason I'm doing that is because this is a lot of fun, reviewing and trying a different beer way better than anticipated, and you guys have made it even more enjoyable by interacting, commenting on the videos, watching the videos. So thank you very much for all the support, and hopefully there's a lot more uh, reviews to come, and I think there will be. But anyway, for my 100th review on the channel, I thought I would review something that I deem special. It's a beer that has been on my bucket list for two or three years, and that beer comes from the Fuller's Brewery, and they are under the Fuller Smith & Turner PLC umbrella, and this is Fuller's Imperial Stout, and this is the 2017 vintage. Now, this is a Russian Imperial Stout that comes in at 10.7% alcohol by volume and 60 IBUs, and at the time of review, this beer... I don't know exactly how old it is. They have on the on the back of the uh, box here, it says best before 2027. So I'd say at the very least it's a year old because it is the 2017 vintage, but it could be even older. It could be 18 months old, who knows? It's pretty damn old, it's aged. And like I said, this is a Russian Imperial Stout and they brew it with uh, dried rosebuds. So pretty interesting as well. And who do I have to thank for this beer? None other than a good friend of mine and former beer tuber, Lee Russell, of the now defunct Hoagley's Beer Reviews. Now, Lee uh, is no longer a beer tuber, obviously, but he does host a movie podcast called They Must Be Destroyed On Sight. So links to both Lee's YouTube channel and his podcast will be in the description box, along with a link to the beer mail unboxing video I did for all of the beers that Lee sent my way. I have reviewed every single one of them except for this one. So thank you very much, Lee. You know I truly appreciate appreciate this one and hopefully this is amazing because so many people say it's a great beer and I'm hoping so but anyway so like I said 2017 vintage there's a bit of story time here in the back we'll read it real quick because it's not that long it says brewed in the traditional style that became a favorite of the Russian royal court this imperial stout has been specially created as a limited edition in a unique addition or in a unique addition to the historic recipe, the floral character of the centennial hops is enhanced by the inclusion of rosebuds, lending a hint of Turkish delight flavor to the beer. This beer is bottle conditioned and will therefore form a natural sediment. So pour carefully, enjoy this uniquely crafted beer from Folders. So like I said, this has been on my bucket list for probably about three or four years. I like Folders beers. I think they do a pretty damn good job. Uh, they're, you know, I guess core lineup is, is pretty solid. My favorite of the bunch from the core lineup is their London Porter. When it comes to their specialty releases, their vintage ale, especially with a bunch of age on it, fantastic. But I've always wanted to try this one. And I think it was back in 2016 at LCBOs in the Ontario province of Canada, they received this beer. I just didn't pick it up because I'm an idiot. So the fact that Lee sent it my way and I get to review it and get to try it and take it off my bucket list, I'm just, I'm so happy. Anyway, let's crack this open and get it into a glass. Uh, like I said, um, this is actually brewed with dried rosebuds. So that's very, very interesting in my opinion. Um, I will say this, as far as the temperature of this beer goes, Paul, Paul, it is, uh, it's room temperature. It's uh, 68 degrees down here today. So 68 degrees, room temperature should be pretty fantastic. Let's give it a pour. So it doesn't pour out like motor oil, like so many of these big Imperial Stouts do nowadays. It just has a very deep brown, almost ruby red color to it. Let's look at it in the light. Yeah, that's like a deep, deep, deep dark brown. Uh, definitely has some ruby red hints to it. Yeah, that's like a murky brown actually. Very interesting. Um, yeah, it's not straight up opaque black, definitely deep brown color. Has about a finger of this nice straight up brown like mocha colored head. Very, very creamy. I don't know how that comes off on camera, but that head is a, just super creamy. Very compact and tight bubbles. Looks like if you have hot chocolate and you have the head before it dissipates. So creamy, so creamy. But anyway, let's get a nose on it because when I cracked it open, I kind of smelled it and I was like, oh, baby. Yeah, that smells fantastic. There's definitely, so they, they say they brew this with dried rosebuds and they talk about, you know, that maybe might add a floral component to it. Definitely is a floral note here. It's, um, yeah, definitely floral, almost herbal right from the get-go. But I'm getting this like really deep and dark cherry note to it. Yeah, dark cherry, uh, a lot of dark chocolate, like a 60 or 70% dark chocolate bar. 
yeah, deeply dark roasted malts as well. A little bit of coffee, but I think it's more of like a roasted, almost slightly charred note to the roasted malt as opposed to uh, actual coffee character. <sighs> Maybe a touch of like a molasses thing going on. Definitely a, a sweeter, more rich and decadent uh, nose to it. There, there's. It's not like a straight up cane sugar, confectionery sugar, has more of like a rich decadent note to it. Like, you know, I, I would, the equivalent would be a dark chocolate bar, like I said, 60, 70% dark chocolate bar, uh, comparatively speaking to a Hershey's dark chocolate bar. You can tell the difference. One has more of just a straight up pure on sugar vibe, the Hershey's, and the 60, 70% doesn't have really much, much sweetness to speak of in comparison. And that's kind of how this nose is. It's more of a dark, decadent, um, robust sweetness as opposed to just pure on, here's full on just like, you know, cane sugar. So... Yeah, uh, it smells really nice. It doesn't smell, I think that's where the rich and decadent note to this beer comes from, is uh, is, is all those, obviously, those those malts. But um, I like the fact that it doesn't smell overly sweet. I believe uh, the Centennial Hops are using, the dried rosebuds, the floral component, there's a little bit of like a bittering component as well. So it's teetering the line of being kind of too sweet on the nose, but it's getting pushed back from those other characters. Yeah, so basically cherries, Cherries, chocolate, bit of that floral herbal component, um, a little bit of bittering note in the nose, but for the most part, it smells like it's going to be a very nicely uh, well-made, cohesive Russian Imperial Stout, and I can't wait to get into it, so let's do so. Cheers, everybody, and thanks again, Lee. Ooh. That's interesting. So that was interesting how the first half was way different than the second half. Right up front, you're hit with all that malt sweetness, all those sweeter characters. The dark chocolate, the sweeter dark cherry, even a little bit of like, I wasn't getting in the nose, but a little bit like a caramel toffee thing, a little bit of molasses. But as it passes like halfway through the palate, there is this definite 100% floral component. Has to be those dried rosebuds in conjunction with that centennial because it just stops maybe maybe like 60, 70% through the palate and just full on dryness. This finishes, I don't say bone dry, but close to bone dry. And it has a lingering bitterness to this one. It kind of, it, it's funny because I talked about in the nose how I thought it might be a bit sweet. Far from it. It's sweet halfway through the palate, second half of the palate dries it out, and you're left with this lingering bitterness, almost like, yeah, almost like a, a floral component in, in addition to this. It's like the centennial hops along with the dried, rose bo uh, dried rosebuds match made in heaven in this beer. So, body. Uh, this isn't full on, this isn't, I was going to say full on, full body. This is not full body. This is like, lower side of full bodied. So probably for Paul, I don't know. I don't remember if Paul from PA Brew News, if he uh, reviewed this beer or not, but he would probably think this is a bit thin. It is a bit thin, but it really doesn't detract uh, from the overall enjoyment for me anyway. Uh, but it is a bit thin, lower side of full body. Uh, the mouthfeel, a bit creamy, a little bit more carbonated than I anticipated though. Yeah, a little bit more carbonated, not as creamy as I would like. So the body mouthfeel, it's solid. It's pretty good. But I really like the overall uh, characters of this beer. That cherry and that chocolate almost give you like a an adult, more like an, an adult um, cherry cordial where it's not overly sweet. It's not like a maraschino cherry. It's like a, like I said, a dark uh, cherry. It's not as sweet covered in dark chocolate as opposed to milk chocolate covered uh, maraschino cherry. And I really like the caramel and molasses. And I like the fact that this has a nice balance to it because I think if up front, all, those, all that sweetness carried throughout the palate, it would be tough to drink the entire 500 mils of this bottle, I think. It'd be a bit too sweet for me um, and it would come off more of a dessert beer. The fact that they have a, a great balance, uh, they were able to get a great balance to this beer is awesome. So I'm really digging it. 10.7%, uh, really not tasting the booze. There's a bit of booziness going down like into the chest, into the stomach, but on the palate, not so much. Uh, if you're, you know, concerned about an almost 11% Russian Imperial Stout, this drink's more like 8-9%. Uh, aside from, like, the chest warming, you really can't detect it on the palate, so that's a win for me. But yeah, uh, is it, like, one of the best Russian Imperial Stouts I've ever had in my life? 
No, it's up there though. It's it's a pretty damn good beer. Um, I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And for my personal uh, score and how I rate on my on my channel, which is to my personal enjoyment, I have no problem giving the uh, Fuller's Russian Imperial Stout. They just call it Rush, uh, Imperial Stout. So Fuller's Imperial Stout, limited edition, 2017 vintage. I'd give that a 4.25 out of 5. Uh, it may be a 4.5 if maybe just the mood was a bit different. Um, I don't know. It's still warm outside right now. If I drank this in maybe like November, December, it would just be more welcoming but at, at the current time it's like 80 degrees outside you know what it still doesn't matter to me i'll drink stouts whenever but at the same time uh right now as i'm drinking this this is a 4.25 out of 5 which still is a great score if you guys have never had the fuller's imperial stout and you can get it in your area i highly recommend it it's a great russian imperial stout really like the addition of the rosebuds in this one uh the centennial hops perfect harmony between those two and it kind of balances the entire beer out from being too sweet so that was fuller's imperial style 4.25 out of 5 appreciate you guys stopping by for another review the 100th review is done i want to thank lee again for hooking me up with this one and here's to many many more reviews in the near future cheers